The pandemic has triggered an unprecedented economic crisis in American history, the share scale of it is far beyond anyone's expectations. The biggest cities are shut down, stock markets are in freefall, tens of millions of pounds of American-grown produce is rotting in fields while food banks are scrambling to meet a massive surge in demand. The housing prices are falling. Everything is falling. It is over. Restaurants are done, food service companies are done, pro sports say are done, big entertainment concerts shows are done. Game over. Complete collapse. The outbreak wreaked economic havoc on a magnitude not seen since the Great Depression. America is now broke and on its own. There will be no recovery. There will be austerity mingled with chaos. Americans are going to get to see a Venezuelan-style societal failure up close and personal. With 40% unemployment and surging inflation. The elephant in the room is the debt bubble. America is trillions in the hole. The real crash is yet to come, when investors realize interest rates will be low forever and inflation picks up, no one but the US government will want dollar-denominated debt. The dollar's days are now numbered, and the Fed knows it. That's why the printing presses are on it day and night. They are trying to delay it for as long as possible. Now they can't, it is totally out of their hands. They know we have reached the end of their monetary experiment that started in 1913 when gold used to be one-to-one -one with the US dollar. Since then, the dollar has depreciated by almost 97%. We are witnessing the remaining 3% evaporating before our own very eyes. The debts will never be repaid. They will migrate us to a new monetary system. The balance sheet will be cleared as a result of migration. The awful effect will, of course, be hyperinflation due to the effect of so much money in circulation. Watch the drama unfolds. The biggest problem is ultimately going to be food. They are shutting down plants because a handful of workers might test positive or have symptoms. Instead of telling the sick workers to stay home, as we do with the flu, we shutter the whole plant indefinitely. Well, guess what is happening? Farmers don't have anywhere to bring their pigs or poultry to get processed, and they have to euthanize them. They can't afford to feed them because they have no income. And they are killing the piglets because they can't raise them. So the pork plant is closed because of a handful of COVID cases, and the pork supply is reduced. And then when the pork plant workers are healthy again, there won't be any pigs to process, because the farmer had to kill them all. This is nothing short of a controlled demolition of the global food supply, economy, monetary, commerce system. America is a debt-fueled fantasy world so detached from reality that it boggles the mind of anyone paying attention. But as long as the world continues to believe the lie, we still can do as we please. People are still optimistic. Just wait until they see how weak demand is for everything, and companies continue to operate at a loss despite being bailed out. Our big, bloated, overbearing federal government is already pushing for digital currency and microchipped subjects, I mean citizens. If you are not turning your dollars into physical gold or silver, you are going to get wiped out. Unless you like having to take a wheelbarrow full of money to the corner store to buy something like a pack of gum, if that's your thing, then go for it. I am thinking that the political, bankster elites will start clamoring to default on the public debt owed to China as reparations for COVID-19. When that happens, it's your signal that the doors are slamming shut on the fiat dollar forever. An economy cannot survive on bailouts forever. At some point, people have to produce actual goods and services. We are way past a recession now, and debt to GDP is exploding as debt is rising because GDP is falling. The average credit card holder has at least four cards. On average, each household with a credit card carries $8,398 in credit card debt. Total US consumer debt is at $13.86 trillion. That includes mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, and student loans. The Americans are now so mired in debt that the elite will continue to carry on draining the pot as they have done with the repo. Bailing out working and middle-class Americans, though, is an absolute non-starter for the ruling elite. The upper crust will throw around vacuous catchphrases, like the deliciously ironic moral hazard, to make their argument, which is pretty rich considering the vermin on Wall Street and their cronies on Capitol Hill are so morally bereft, it is a hazard to all humanity. Sad to say USA is a total mess. Local small businesses are losing a ton of money. Sales have dropped to nothing even if they are fully open. They are being buried in new government regulations. 
They have piles of forms for financial aid that are complex and overwhelming. Even if all the small businesses were allowed to open today, the mainstream media fear propaganda is keeping the sheeple at home. All by design to keep the people enslaved and in fear. And no more small businesses, as the big corporations, will take over. This virus is to distract you from the fact that next year, no matter who is president, we will be faced with inflation that would make Paul Volcker shudder in his wingtip shoes. The debt was bad enough, but adding 2.2 trillion of waste onto it and more in the shadows, well. Take that to the banks. America is on its way to becoming another Venezuela. Many parts of the USA are already Venezuela. This is a big country. But as one traverses this great majestic land, one quickly realizes that there is indeed two Americas. I travel to places where folks been suffering through the Great Depression for, oh, I dunno, the last 40, 50 years. Then again, there are the cities, many resembling Dresden, after the firebombing. Tent cities out back of the Walmart. Folks sleeping in their cars down by the river. A record number of millennials moving back with moms and pops, or never left. Except, in that case, there is no longer a farm to work. Yes, sports fans, there will always be the poor among us. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Shutting down someone's livelihood or business is the same as seizing it. The government required to provide just compensation for its seizures. Of course, the seizures are also illegal, so the government not only has to pay, but they must also be sent to jail. When you and I go to court with our demands, the governments will argue that there were no orders and that all the behavior was voluntary. That means protecting your rights and your livelihood. You must go back to work, otherwise, they will say you voluntarily destroyed yourself. This is not a stretch. This is coming. I did not volunteer for any of it. Nor should you. For those who have paid any attention, you got screwed in 2008, when the housing bubble popped. That is when this money printing, bank, and corporate bailout madness started, and it is what inflated the stock markets over the past decade. The Fed is who inflated the housing bubble and was the Fed that reinflated the recent debt bubble, which popped in January by the way, and the air is still draining from that bubble. There is no possible way to reinflate it, so don't get your hopes up, and here is why. Nothing was fixed after the housing bubble popped, it was all covered up with inflation or expansion of the money supply. Now, we have enormous amounts of money chasing too few products, as no one is making anything, as millions of people are now out of work and about to lose everything. If anyone thinks all of this unemployment and economic decline is going to drive stock prices, which were already incredibly overpriced, and are still expensive, they need their heads examined. What the Fed is doing now is simply pissing good money after bad ideas, and the end result will be catastrophic. For those who want to make money, buy physical gold. It is already up 30 plus percent in 2020 while most everything else is down 30 percent and it is going a lot higher. The American economy had been like a dying star. A star dies when it starts to expand, burning up its own mass instead of generating its energy in a sustainable way. The star keeps burning away more and more of its mass, becoming less and less dense until it cannot support the burning. It stops burning and collapses into a black hole. Greenspan's liquidity had diluted up the asset values with all kinds of financial products, derivatives, rehypothecation, securitization, bulldust, etc. A solid asset-based economy had been hollowed out and expanded. Liquidity had kept the economy expanded like a dying star, and as a Ponzi, the next liquidity pump must be exponentially bigger than the one before. In 2008, for a start, at least $25 trillion was created and loaned out to all the banks in the world. This time the Fed must create at least $50 trillion to $250 trillion for a start to stop the collapse. If you study deep history, you would understand what is really going on, this isn't well-intentioned foolishness. This economic collapse is a part of a very long-term plan that the European banks have used to usurp entire continents by monetary policies and central banks. It started around the Renaissance in Venice and was moved to Spain as the Americas were colonized. Then for a short time, Holland was involved, then England ruled the waves with their navy and has really never relinquished financial control although America was a proxy military through today. The bank's final prize is, you guessed it, China. That's it in short. It's all been engineered. Patterns are very telling. 
If you've read Jared Diamond's book, Guns, Germs and Steel, you would see a repeated pattern utilized by European colonists throughout the Age of Discovery, i.e., guns, germs, and steel. Now, if you study the rise of banking, which had its seminal point in the early Middle Ages with the Knights Templars and the Vatican putting usury on all transactions through their bankers, you would see the greedy human pattern repeated over and over. Now forward to Waterloo and the banking interests betting on both sides and through this owning all banking houses that mattered on the planet right up to today. We need the gold standard back. Otherwise, the financial industry will eat the rest of the economy, like any other predator. Honest money, gold, silver, can't be manipulated like currency. America will never be the same, the takedown of America was planned decades ago. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.